the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Ron. <laughs> <What's the last laughs> Robert Ron. It is my distinct pleasure to present to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Robert <laughs> Robert was born in Fort Park Hospital in Kirkcaldy at uh, 25 to 1 on, Saturday, on the 12th of September. He was a big baby. He weighed eight and a half pounds and he never really gave us any real problems as a baby. He was a good good child, he was quite happy going, very, very calm child and grew up happy. Right, if you want to add anything. Yeah, everyone just sat where you see there, everyone. Uh -huh. Perfect. Everyone was perfect about him. Loving son. Always smiling, always smiling. He enjoyed his like childhood and growing up in terms of like going out and that with friends as well. He was constantly out and stuff with his friends. When he, obviously him and Suzanne and, were and together and they were constantly mm -hmm. out. Had loads of parties. A big, he was a popular guy at school as well. So mm -hmm. even my friends as well kind of knew of me as being Robert's buller as well in that sense. And mm -hmm. um, we organized, I used to have a, you know, like a Nintendo Wii games console. So Robert kind of stole the idea of that and every Friday he'd have a wee Friday party where he'd bring Sam and a few other friends over every Friday. That My mum would cook food and stuff and have them all in there. He's, he'd always have someone, he'd always have friends with him. Like it seemed like it was never, we had plenty of time to get but he'd always have his, like there was always someone like a friend or mm -hmm. A partner or whatever. Or he was there, yeah. or he was at theirs. Cause yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I didn't some... actually see Robert much when I came here. Yeah. Uh, after he got to maybe 10, 10, 12, because he was either in yeah. his room playing football on the computer or outside or, or somewhere. So I didn't see much yeah. of him. But the things, I'd always had a smile on his face, yeah. even, all the time. I even every photo. Like, you're the same, Gary. Every photo you see of him as well, he's mm -hmm. always got that mm -hmm. smile. Even for the Brentford days as well, he's still got that same mm -hmm. smile. Mm -hmm. I remember when we were younger and we were like sitting at a dinner table and for some God knows what reason, one time my mum said that we should say like a prayer because we were never even like that Catholic or religious. And Robert like straight away wanted to like say it and then did some like daft rhyme he had heard on The Simpsons or something and like my mum was like, totally pissed off as if it was uh, such a terrible thing that he had done and he thought it was hilarious. But yeah, it was just just funny, just silly. Made everybody laugh. Bit like serious as well. He's like someone good to run thoughts by because he was smart obviously and he was good at getting where he wanted to be. And, Like, yeah, a good person to ask for advice. He was always like up for a laugh and mm -hmm. his eyes were the first thing that got you always the same and just bubbly and like the mischief just used to shine out on me. He was yeah. always up to something and just always the same. Just, I, he just, I adored him. He just was <laughs> lovely, nicest person yeah. ever. Even she would say to me, I've got two <laughs> big sisters as well. <laughs> What about Fern for one of your sisters? And I was like, no, Mum, no. I used to <laughs> like, him all the time. He's I a nice guy, but I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be like to my oldest daughter, you and Big Rav should get together. And she goes, he's younger than me. I went, three years younger, that sits not a long time. And, I, and then he used to Mum, none of the sisters are, she's not getting fixed up well and that's it. <laughs> and even till, honestly, when he was having Suzanne were getting married, I was like, that could have been you, Finch, to be in a way with Big Rav. He's just. <laughs> <laughs> he just used to laugh, eh? Yeah. <laughs> but he was, he was, he was just lovely. By the age of two, Aye. he had his, his wee Celtic strip and the scarf and 
he'd sit with Chris on a Saturday or whatever and sit and watch the games on the telly and cheer them on. And, he used to be uh, pal Sam, he used to be pal Sam with right Rangers daft, he used aye. to come and watch the games with. This was a different, another uh, Sam Gillespie. He, uh, he loved the uh, Rangers. Rangers scored a goal, so he was all over the place, bouncing about and all that. Just, uh, he's been in the kitchen banging doors and all that man. <laughs> Robert was killing himself laughing. So it was really good. But he played football all the time, he loved football. He really did. I loved watching him. I said earlier on that he had a couple of Colts and uh, he was a big defender, so he was he was good a defender, but he was his heart was down it, I don't know why, but but anyway, one game I can remember he scored his only first and only goal, so it was and uh, so that it was a corner and the big defender, so he's up Draw. I'm expecting Robert to jump up and head it. So the ball comes over and all that, and I'm watching, and Robert's jumping up, and the ball's bouncing all over the place. I hit off his arse, in the goal. That was his first goal. <laughs> and he was <laughs> kissing the badge as if he was pelly, so he was. <laughs> was brilliant. Robert attended St Mary's Primary School for the age of five until 12. And he moved on to St Andrews was, High School, but he was very in popular room. in school. And when they left, they had their shirts signed, or the pupils had their shirts signed. And All the people from his class here. They moved up to the, up to the school just up behind you as well there. That's by, a high um, school just up behind yeah. you. I don't know if you can get that in the picture. But, but yeah, this, this was, is... It was very popular in school, both with teachers and with the students, and just had a great time. He loved school. Yeah. He was never... Never off school and Lacey really had to be. He loved school and I mean, there was a great big area that he could put his football talent to. Yes, and he just loved. And he grew up watching mm -hmm. Celtic mm -hmm. um, on the TV. Quite amazing, actually. And going to matches to now working. Even just from talking to him, he'd be telling you so, like players he was meeting or even just, I think he'd, he used to always tell me how to. Um, Mourinho and his phone number, I thought of it because Mourinho's mm. numbers, he'd always boast about that and that just as a joke, but yeah, it's just little bits like that you'd be like... Oh, it was, I yeah. wouldn't have surprised me if he was actually thinking that he'd maybe be a manager one day, yeah. honestly. Yeah, definitely. Because mm -hmm. Robert was really uh, confident he and was, yeah. outgoing and positive. Yeah, he was confident I mean, even though lot, yeah. he had his, his problems, he just kept going. My pals would like, <clears throat> if Robert was coming to the pub, my pals would absolutely love it because he just had all these amazing football stories and talk about all like funny stories and like stuff he did at work and like with my pals, Robert was like a total celebrity because he was like such a laugh. It was like that when we were younger as well, but yeah, down here, like just everybody, all my pals were just always so keen that he, when he was going to be around or if we were going to go to the Brentford game, because sometimes one or two of my pals would come along and they'd say like, oh, will we, will we see Robert, will we see Robert at half time, or will he come for a pint with us afterwards, do you think? He wasn't like drinking the last couple of years, obviously, I don't know, like stopped, but he'd still come and sit in the pub and just chat nonsense with us for like hours. And yeah, just keep everybody laughing. and. Yeah, he was a really beautiful person to be around. Like, created a really beautiful atmosphere around him. He was, by the time he was, uh, went to Brentford, him and Suzanne were together. And Suzanne was a big part of his life. And he just, I think he tried a few times to try and get Suzanne to uh, go on a date with him. And eventually, Suzanne gave in. But I think that was that's Suzanne's one of the best things that happened in Robert's life as well, because she was just so understanding of his career, and especially when they went to Brentford, she uh, a lot of the time he'd be working through the week, then he'd be games at the weekend, so kind of like. She, but she supported him wholeheartedly throughout and had a brilliant relationship. Um, I was out with my cousin and a few friends and um, 
Rob walked into the nightclub and my cousin mentioned the fact that he was kind of hot property at their work at Toys R Us. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just remember kind of glancing over and that was the first time I actually saw him. Um, we ended up at Tina Park. Um, same time, I was with my friends and he was with his friends and my cousin again. Got in touch with him when we first arrived to help with all our luggage and alcohol. <laughs> and um, I kind of just started from there. So we kind of texted back and forward and then he suggested that we would go on a date before he headed off to Sweden, to which I agreed. And yeah, we went to see Toy Story 3 <laughs> at the Odeon. And he showed up wearing grey joggy bottoms and a grey hoodie. Which was quite amusing. Yeah, about a year and a half later we moved in together at a little flat in Kirkcaldy and then two years later he got the call to come down here. So that was kind of our start to our journey. <laughs> before he met Suzanne, like a few years before he met Suzanne, I would come in with Brendan and Brendan would be like, where's Robert? I'm like, through the room. Go through Robert's on his <laughs> Robert's sitting on his bed watching telly and maybe half a dozen girls. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Just friends. Yeah. Just yeah, it's a lot of girl friends as well. Right. That's Hi. the thing. Yeah, a lot of Hi. female friends too. But yeah, um, and then he the had a good life. Moved into their first flat down just on about ten minutes away was their first flat, and hmm. it's quite close by. So I think he liked it for that reason. He could still visit us, and Suzanne could still visit her family around. His friends, then like Suzanne and his family, was just always, never really changed, did it? No, it never mm. changed. Just always, always, always the same. Mm -hmm. Just lovely and a yeah. lovely, genuine person. Yeah. And I think that's when like, you see him around, like even like you guys and like other people at Brentford as well. Like, we could probably say the exact same things about him. Like, he's just the way he is. Like, no one really had like a bad word to say yeah. or something that was not what everyone else was saying, but yeah. No ears and graces about him, just what you see was what you got and mm. he was just, he was lovely. Yeah, the Brentford stuff, kind of late summer 2014, he took a few calls and started talking about it and I remember thinking this is actually going to go somewhere, this is serious, we're going to, he's going to move. Again, even talking about it, going back, it just all feels really surreal because we were just dead open to it, kind of, it was exciting. It was exactly what he needed, what he deserved because he'd been through tough times and I think at one point he really gave up on the idea that football was going to be his career and that was really hard to watch somebody he loved and cared about so much and the passion they have for something to then realise that that might not work out for him. So it was just all worth it. We just created our own little bubble down here and it was just the best thing ever. We just went from strength to strength. <coughs> it was so nice to see him rebuild his confidence in football and he was just so happy down here and working for Brentford and he just loved being somewhere different, somewhere new. Just, yeah, we just went from strength to strength and within a, probably just over a year he took me to the Shard for my 31st birthday and he proposed um, and it was just one of the best days of my life. It was completely, I was completely caught unaware. I knew that we talked about marriage and kids and things but um, I didn't think he would plan something <laughs> so well in advance. Um, so we um, went to Antigua, um, went out I think about the 4th of November and got married on the 7th. We stayed there for about a week and then we went to Miami for a few days after that, um, which was amazing. And again, we never had opportunity to do things like this before. So to be able to go to the Caribbean and get married and kind of experience this paradise and then to go to, I think it's the first time that Robert had been to the States and we just both loved it. It was just super chilled, super relaxed and just had a really good time. Robert turned 15, he had been complaining that he wasn't well, wasn't feeling well for a while <coughs> and he would never ever want to be off school. That was one thing, that was when I knew he wasn't well. 
one night he was lying on the couch and I took him back and forward to the doctors and they gave him anti-sickness tablets and things. And uh, he was lying on the couch and then I says, he went through one night and he came back through and he says, Mum, will you lie down beside me? And I says, he was 15 at this time, I says to him, you're quite big to, a big boy to lie on the side, what's up here? And he says, because I feel like I'm no going to waken up. Oh yeah. Somebody still know this road with us in house was. I went in beside Robert. I lay on top of the bed. And as soon as Robert fell asleep, I went on his computer and I put in the symptoms and I thought, I always had at the back of my mind there was some. It bothered them, like I remember when we were younger, like, <clears throat> um, him being like sad or upset. Because he knew he was sick, but didn't really know, like, how serious. So I guess it was, like, scary for him. But we didn't talk about it much. So I put all the symptoms in and it came up with heart stuff. So I sent an email to a heart nurse in Edinburgh Hospital. And that morning when I got up, I looked at the computer and at half past nine, there was, the, sorry, there was an email at eight o'clock to say, please, can you bring Robert to Edinburgh Western General today at half past nine? So I explained to him that I wanted him to go along to see them to just so they could take a look at him. And there was a Dr Finlay there. And he says he couldn't believe because of the damage of Robert's heart. The damage of Robert. They couldn't believe how bad it was. And I'd never been picked up. Um, I mean, I don't, I can't remember specific details, but I, early on in our relationship, I remember him explaining to me kind of the situation with his heart stuff, and that he hadn't been given a, a proper diagnosis, but there was a few issues going on there. I don't know. Again, looking back, I think he was really brave about it all. I think he didn't like a fuss. He didn't. He didn't like to talk about it because he didn't fully understand it himself. I don't think. Um, because he was never given a proper diagnosis, it wasn't something that it was easily explained to other people. So, um, again, remember in kind of early days when we first started dating, I don't really remember it being much of a thing, but when we moved in together, there was a few nights um, he would wake up and he would have quite bad palpitations. Um, so there were a few times we ended up driving to the a &E. It was awful seeing him like that, especially I think this was just after he'd been announced as technical director and, you know, was planning all this stuff that he was going to be doing and how busy he was going to be and then feeling like this was going to kind of hold him back and he would just sit and cry with me about how scared he was and I, again, just wanted to tell him I was going to be okay because that's what I believed and after that kind of episode I remember sitting here with him and, um, I promised him that I wouldn't let anything happen to him because I genuinely believed he was getting the best care and yeah, it's still, it's still hard kind of just now to kind of accept how it ended up like this because, you know, there was a lot of signs and a lot of checks and a lot of scans and, a, you know, I just still struggled to figure out why. So it's like amazing all the stuff he like achieved, but at the time it's just you just like miss your uh, miss your wee brother, and um, I just, like I always he was just always great, um, just always such an amazing guy. 
I'm more glad about <clears throat> like all the people you got to like meet and touch in the same way that he affected us so positively while he was around as opposed to what he really achieved but that's great for him because I know it was like um, nothing mattered more, more to him really than like but apart from Sue's but he just yeah he, he, he loved it and it's great he got to Yeah, it's great you got to like, do all that. That's why it's really important to talk about it because, you know, it's sadly not something that it's, it's not as uncommon as people might like to think and raising awareness for cry and um, just being people aware that they can get themselves checked out, that it's, it's just, it's really important and I wish that it was something that everybody was entitled to do um, because Cry screenings, it's for, you know through raising money and things like that. But it's yeah, it's just it's just really important. <laughs> I've still got some champagne that he gave me when I moved in. So far, marriage, got mine. Now. And now it's like you can't, I can never open it, eh? Because I just I've now got mine as an ornament because I think it's champagne. I can never ever open it. So it's just got his picture on the front, and it's an ornament now. Mm -hmm. Again, that's what he did, eh? Just so yeah. lovely, so just generous, thoughtful, kind, just, he was everything. Yeah. You know, he'd probably be looking down here the day laughing, <laughs> shaking his head. He'd be almost embarrassed, I he think, that we were be. all here he talking about be. him and, and that everyone's making this big fuss yeah. about him, but he deserved it, so. Yeah, you know. definitely deserved it, a shadow of a doubt. Just the scale that came out, after he passed away was just unbelievable that at 28 years old he could have made such an impression in the world of football but also we friends. <laughs>